I'm Sakura Busujima. I'm a 21-year-old college student. My name was pretty, but my face, not so much. Kids always bullied me for being ugly. And it wasn't just my classmates. I got bullied at home too. I had this sister that was two years older than me. She was really pretty. I had no idea how she was related to me. My parents loved her a lot, but they barely talked to me. Once, they even told me I'd be single all my life, so I better get good grades at least. I guess my sister got mom's good genes and I got dad's. But then, I met someone in college. I never thought it'd happen, but it did. His name was Masayoshi. He was two years older than me. He majored in economics. I met him through my extracurricular activities. He was really nice like everyone else, but he was blind. You having a good time? Yeah. Thanks for the food. Huh? When you got the food for me earlier, you put the plate right next to my hand so I'd be able to grab it. How did you know that was me? Losing my eyesight heightened my other senses. I can still tell who's who, you know. I fell in love with him in no time. Turns out he felt the same way, but... Hey, but I'm ugly. If you could see, you'd be really disappointed in me. That doesn't matter. Well, actually, I guess it matters a little. But hey, looks aren't everything. I still like you. Your voice is cute and you're really kind to me. Nobody's ever said that to me before. Not even my family. I started crying. He gave me a hug. Then we started dating. We kept dating even after he graduated and got a job. Then three years later, he said he wanted to meet my parents. I should have been happy, but I was kind of worried. Hey. What? Can I bring my boyfriend over next weekend? Your boyfriend? Yeah. Seriously? You? Who would go out with you? You're hideous! He must be a freak! I actually want to see him! I'm surprised too! How long has it been? Three years. That's so long! Why were you hiding this from me? I wasn't hiding it. He better have a good job. I don't want my daughters dating losers. He's not like that. He's got a job. Where does he work? Moni Robo Co. What? Moni Robo? That's a huge firm! That's great! Wow! If he can get a job there, I'm sure he can get any girl he wants. Why you? Dad, be nice. But you got a point. Wait, he's really old, isn't he? A few divorces under his belt. He's only 23, and no, he's never been married. What? That's perfect! Wait, is he even real? He's not imaginary, is he? He's real. I'm coming over next Sunday. He wants to meet you all. Got it. Glad you found someone. Thought you'd be single all your life. I'll be here too. Can't wait to see this freak. They're pretty mean, right? Well, this is how they are. I'm used to it by now. Sunday. I was pretty nervous. We arrived at the house. My family was waiting anxiously. Then, they found out he was blind. Ah, that's why. They didn't say it out loud, but I could tell that's what they were thinking from the look on their face. Then, he started making fun of him because of his disability. I was enraged! Then, after I took him home, I got a text. 23 years old works at a big firm. I was wondering how you got with someone like that. But it all makes sense now. Yeah, wasn't expecting a blind guy. How did he even get that job anyways? Companies are required to hire a certain amount of disabled people. That's not true. He might be blind, but he got the job the same way as everyone else. And he told you why he lost his sight, right? Oh, how he protected his sister in an accident? Oh, give me a break. Cry me a river. It was a touching story. But him? I mean, are you really gonna marry that thing? What? He's not an object. But he's blind. He's useless to society. Well, I guess you guys make a good couple then. 
You can marry him if you want, but just don't cause us any trouble. Just keep us out of it. If you want to throw a wedding, do it yourself. He might not be related by blood, but still. I don't want people to know that there's a blind guy in my family, so... What? You serious? He may have a disability, but he is working like everyone else. He's a hardworking man. What's wrong with that? It's just how it is. Yeah. Oh, well, it's Sakura. I think he's perfect for her. Don't worry about me, though. I won't bring home a disabled person. <laughs> I hope so. Oh, please. Don't even joke about that, dear. <laughs> I always knew you guys were toxic, but I'm speechless. You know what? Fine. You won't have to come to our wedding. Once I graduate, I'll leave the house. I'm done with this family. <laughs> You're cutting ties with us. Go ahead. Just don't come crying to us for help. Just keep us out of trouble. I decided to cut all ties with them. After college, I got out of the house and rented an apartment with Masayoshi. I got a job too. It was nothing special, but the hours weren't that long, which was perfect because I had to take care of Masayoshi. I did everything around the house so he could focus on his work. And he always thanked me for everything. He was so kind and caring. Three years later, we got married and had our first child. But I never told my parents. When I tried to tell him about my family... It's my disability, right? Huh? When I visited your family, they all looked really upset. You knew? Oh, cheer up. I'm used to it. Sorry about my family. Don't apologize. I'm just glad I got to marry you, Sakura. I felt bad at first, but he seemed to be okay with it. I decided to move on. Life was pretty peaceful. My family never reached out to me again. But three years later, on my 28th birthday, mom and dad texted me for the first time in six years. Long time no talk. How are you? What do you want? Nothing. Just wanted to see how you were doing. Okay, I'm fine. Glad to hear. Hey, Sakura. I read this article from the other day. Your boyfriend from college, is he a CEO now? Masayoshi? Yeah. He started his own business. He develops tools for the blind so they can work and live like everyone else. That's amazing! Yeah! What is this about? You're creeping me out. You think I forgot about what you said to him? Seriously? What do you want? Well, um... We were wondering if you could help us out financially. Huh? He's a CEO, right? He must make a lot of money. Come on, we're not asking for much. So that's what this is about. <laughs> you guys are unbelievable. Please, we need your help! You're our last hope, Sakura! For what? I just can't give you money like that. And you didn't even tell me how much. More the merrier, um... Uh... Um, we need at least 5 million yen. What? No, 3 million would be fine too. Please! What on earth for? What did you do? Your sister. She got addicted to one of those host clubs. She bought this one guy a bunch of stuff, but ran out of money. Then she got dumped and... Wait, she's still single? I thought she was going to marry someone really handsome. She had lots of options! She even dated this son of a CEO once! She should have been married by now! I want to see my grandchildren already! But she got hooked on hosts. Why, how did this happen? Well, she, um... She was having an affair, huh? Please, Sakura. She's 30 now. She'll never get married if she's up to her neck in debt. She borrowed money to go to a host club? What an idiot! She's your sister! Don't you feel bad for her? We're family! Families help each other out, right? By that logic, we're not family. You didn't even come to our wedding. And when I was struggling with child rearing, Masayoshi was the one who stood by my side, not you. You have kids? Why didn't you tell us? Why would I? I thought you wouldn't be interested. 
And you realize that you're asking me for money on my birthday. Birthday? Right, happy birthday. Happy birthday? <laughs> yeah, nice try. So, is it a boy or a girl? Come see us. Yeah, come over. Bring Masayoshi too. Sorry, but no. I never want to see you again. And Masayoshi is busy. He doesn't have time for you. What's that supposed to mean? Your family needs your help. You're not my family. Masayoshi and my daughter. That's the only family I got. We help each other out. We support each other. Unlike you guys. Gotta go. Have fun being in debt. Wait, Sakura! Wait, I said wait! Mom, Dad, my sister, I blocked them all. I have no idea what happened to them after. But when I passed by their house the other day, it was on sale. I heard that my sister couldn't stop going to host clubs. Her debt doubled and finally she went bankrupt. I'm sure she's still single. Whatever, not my problem. As for me, I quit my job and became a secretary for Masayoshi. I'm just glad everything worked out for me. Time to move on with my life with my real family. My name is Nano. I'm a freshman in high school. My father is a businessman and my mother works part-time. I have a younger brother who's nine years younger than me named Yuki. The four of us were one happy family, but six months ago, a sudden tragedy swept over our family. Dad! <laughs> Mom! <laughs> I'm here for you, Yuki. <gasps> After that, our relatives held a meeting and decided that my brother and I were to stay with my father's younger brother and his wife. My uncle and his wife didn't have any children of their own and were talking about adopting a child anyways, so it was perfect because we were related by blood to them. I was ready to care for Yuki myself, so honestly, I was relieved. However, when we got there, I found out that my uncle was a very controlling person. What the hell are these grades? You better not be slacking off, moisturizing cream. You don't need this crap. Get rid of it. How many times do I have to tell you not to leave your hair on the floor? Honey, don't you think you're being a bit too strict on her? You keep your mouth shut. Setting boundaries and rules in the beginning is the most important part. Hey, it's almost nine o'clock. Get to bed. I better not catch you staying up. Things went on like this, and I had absolutely no freedom, and I was forced to help my aunt and sleep by 9 p.m. But these rules only apply to me. All right, Yuki. Let's watch a movie together. I found one that looks great. Can Nano join us? Oh, your sister's already asleep. So let's watch it together, all right? Okay. My uncle was very harsh towards me, but spoiled Yuki like crazy. His reason was... You'll be taking on our family name, so you gotta study hard and become a capable young man, all right? My aunt came from a family of business owners, and my uncle was taken into the family as the heir to their family business and wanted his own son to be the heir to his throne. But they were having a hard time conceiving a child when coincidentally, they were able to adopt us, who were related by blood. My uncle was thrilled about this and would always say, You're here thanks to Yuki. I never needed a girl. Thankfully, my aunt was on my side and Yuki still cared about me, so I was able to endure my uncle's cold attitude toward me. But something happened in my senior year. Hey, what time do you think it is right now? It's still 7 p.m. You want me to take away your phone? I work a part-time job, and I bought this phone with my own money. You don't have the right to take it away from me, Uncle. That's not fair. Shut up! You're just a freeloader! You wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Yuki! I'm grateful that you took us in. I really am. That's why I help out Auntie so much around the house, and try to pay for myself as much as I can. Duh! None of that is worth praise. Just keeping you with us costs us extra money for food and things, all right? Yeah, I understand. Let me make one thing clear. I'm not paying for you to go to college, all right? Okay, but there should be money from my parents' insurance, so I plan to use that for college. Yeah, right. You're not touching that money. Huh? All of that money is going to be spent on Yuki's education. Why, though? I have a right to that money as well. You're just a girl. 
What's the point of a girl going to college? On the other hand, Yuki has a purpose. To study hard and take over the family business. So who deserves that money? Even a monkey could answer that. But that money was from my parents, for both of us. I'll save money and pay for my classes, so please, let me pay for my enrollment fee from that money. No, never. Why not? I'm trying to make a compromise here. I'm saying that you can use the rest on Yuki. I mean, first of all, you have no right to decide how that money is spent, uncle. How dare you say that? You're just a freeloader. See, this is why I hate girls. I'm your legal guardian. I have a responsibility to manage your funds. It's part of my job. To make sure that you don't use Yuki's share of the money as well. There was no getting through to him. I didn't know what to do, so I consulted my aunt. My aunt was furious about it too. Hey, what the hell is this that I hear about you not letting Nano use the money that your brother left behind? Yuki is my successor. That money is going to him. Nano and Yuki are both your brother's children. That's so selfish and unacceptable. I'm the man of this house. You keep your mouth shut. You've been like that ever since you took over the company after my father. You think that men are better than women? Think again. The argument escalated, and my aunt and uncle got into a physical fight. Stop, auntie! She's gonna get hurt! <sighs> All of this is your fault, Nano. After you graduate high school, get out of my house! So... This is how I got kicked out after three years of being adopted. You don't have to listen to that stubborn fool, you know. No! Don't go, Nano! Listen, Yuki. Even after I'm gone, study hard and become a self-sufficient and independent man, okay? Okay. If I do, will I be able to see you again someday, Nano? Of course, Yuki. I'll be waiting for you. My aunt and Yuki tried to talk me out of it, but my mind was set. After that, I worked my ass off to save money to live alone and go to college. But it wasn't enough. I was thinking about what to do when my aunt secretly handed me an envelope with $10,000 in it. I was surprised. I'm so sorry about him. Please use this when you need it and call me if you're ever in trouble, okay? I thanked my aunt in tears. But at the same time, I couldn't be reliant on her money. So I applied for a scholarship and somehow managed to get myself into college. The day of my graduation, I grabbed what little things I owned and left my uncle's house. And I received some messages almost immediately. I better not see you ever again. Don't come back crying. You won't get any help from me. It was my graduation today. Don't you have the decency to at least say congratulations or something? Why would I congratulate you? Nothing to celebrate there. Okay, why are you contacting me then? There's something that I thought you should know. What's that? When my brother, your father, died in that accident, we were only supposed to adopt Yuki. What? So at that funeral, I talked to Yuki alone and asked him if he wanted to join our family. What do you think he said? I don't know. Tell me. He said that he would only come if you came. He was quite stubborn about it. Yuki said that? Oh my. I told him that I'd buy him anything he wanted. His favorite toys or comics. Anything. But he didn't accept my offer. He didn't want to be split from you. The only reason why you weren't put into the foster system is thanks to Yuki. Why are you telling me this now? Such weird timing. Just to remind you that the only reason why you were able to live with us is because I wanted Yuki to inherit my empire. In other words, you don't have a place here. You never did. So stay away from Yuki and do what you want and die however you want. You'll never hear from me again. Thank you for everything. Goodbye. Good, finally, we're done wasting our precious money on you. I couldn't hold my tears back. Not because of the hurtful and cold words that my uncle threw at me, but finding out that Yuki had stood behind me. I realized that it was Yuki who was protecting me all this time, and I was ashamed that I never noticed that. I sat in my cheap and empty rundown apartment and cried for hours. I promised myself to become an independent adult that wouldn't have to have Yuki protect me anymore. So I gave everything I had to my college education and part-time job. My hard work paid off, 
and I managed to get into a good company. All the while, I was secretly in touch with my aunt and checked up on Yuki now and then. She told me how Yuki was diligently and successfully been completing all of the assignments and readings that my uncle handed him and was always the top of his class. Once he was in high school, Yuki got a phone and secretly contacted me and we were back in touch again. He had grown into such a respectable young man and so caring about me still. But he had a flame of revenge burning inside of him towards my uncle. Ten years later, I was 40 years old and Yuki was 31 now, and the time was right. Hey! Who's this? It's me! I don't know anyone named me. Your uncle! What? No, that's not possible. That man kicked me out of the house. There's no way he would contact me. So you must be a con man. I'm blocking you now. What? I'm your uncle! You haven't heard about my illness? Sure I have. I heard that you claimed to be going to business meetings and practically were drowning yourself in booze, and how you shoved expensive food down your throat and became overweight. And as a result, you got blood clots. And now your lower body is paralyzed, right? You know everything? Yeah, so what? That has nothing to do with me. Of course it does! Come home and take care of me! You owe me for raising you! Yeah, that makes no sense. At all. Yuki told me everything. You said you were going to use that money that my parents left for us for Yuki's education. But you used it on your hobbies and leisure, right? What are you talking about? That was my hard-earned money! You think you can convince Yuki of that too? Just so you know, it was Yuki who does the bookkeeping at your company that found out about this. What? Yuki? Oh yeah. He has a bunch of proof about how you've been embezzling the company's money. So what? Yuki is my successor, whom I raised myself. Yuki listens to anything I say. He'll help me hide this. I just have to give him the word. I'm truly impressed at how capable Yuki is. You guys talked every day, but he fooled you so well. What do you mean? I'm sure you didn't know that Yuki never forgave you for kicking me out of the house. Lies! You don't know Yuki at all! He only smiled and did everything I told him to! Do you really think that people like that exist? You have no idea how much Yuki had to hold himself back, all to fool you. It's painful for me to even imagine what he had to go through. You're the one that's being fooled. Yuki is my successor! Sure, go ahead and believe that if you want. We're all entitled to our own beliefs, but you'll see what happens. What do you mean? He's going to use all of that evidence that he gathered and force you out of the company. What? Who's going to do that? Like I said, Yuki is. What? But you don't believe that he would, right? So sit tight. Oh, my bad. You can't do anything but sit tight right now. Shut up! Hey! After that, Yuki submitted the preponderance of evidence to the company executives, and my uncle was kicked out of the company while he was still hospitalized. I haven't seen Yuki really smile like that in a while when he was telling me about what was going on at the company. At the same time, I realized the magnitude of burden I left him with when I left the house. Yuki was praised for raising the questions about his uncle and was voted in as the next president of the company. At the same time, my aunt filed for divorce. My uncle, who needed care, obviously tried to fight it, but the years of mental abuse was recognized by court, and she was freed and won a hefty amount of alimony. My uncle was abandoned by my aunt, me, and his only hope, my brother. He used what little money he had left to hire caretakers for a while, but since he was such an arrogant guy, they only did the bare minimum and left him alone on his bed for most of the day. I felt a little bad that he was living a lonely life now, but I guess he deserves it after everything he did for his selfish purpose. What goes around comes around, I guess. I'm Masayoshi Sugo. I'm a 28-year-old office worker. I was a pretty earnest guy. I've always been like this since I was a kid. My classmates always made fun of me for being nerdy. I followed all the rules. And whenever I saw someone break the rules, I had to tell them to stop. Kids made fun of me all the time for this. They called me names like Teacher's Pet and Square, but I kept at it. 
I studied hard, went to college, and got into one of the biggest firms in the world. Five years went by after I started working here. Finally, I got a promotion. They made me team leader. Then we got this new guy on our team. He was the same age as me. I was in charge of training him. I was really excited to meet this new guy, but then... Yo, I'm Ryuta. What's good, yo? Ryuta Tekito? It was my old classmate from high school. He was a bully. He harassed me all the time. I hated him. He was my mortal enemy. He bullied me for years. I was the quiet, earnest guy, and he was the class jock. He was the complete opposite of me. My colleague told me that this was his fifth company, which means he probably never stayed at the same company for more than a year. I had a bad feeling about him, and I was right to be worried. Yo, long time no see. Hey, um, this is the company phone. And technically, I'm your boss, so don't talk to me like that. We're not in high school anymore. What? Haha, <laughs> that's a good one. You, my boss? Give me a break, yo. Why should I? Why? Because I'm your boss. Haha, <laughs> give it a rest. Remember high school? You were at the bottom of the social pyramid. But now you're a leader at a big firm. Look at you! I don't want to say this, but how did you get in? I heard you talking to my colleague in HR. I'm surprised they let you in. <laughs> I never did an interview. Huh? How did you get in then? You know Mr. Koneda in sales? Yeah. He's my uncle. I needed a job, so he hooked it up. What? Seriously? Oh, come on. It's not my fault I got connections. Of course. Having connections is really important. So I don't have a problem with that. But if you're gonna work here, you're gonna have to work hard. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm pretty stupid, man. Don't count on me. Stop talking like that. Someone once said that those who can call themselves stupid are actually pretty smart, but I don't know about that. I had a bad feeling about him. The next day, I started training him. He was so useless. I know it's not easy learning new stuff. I've had employees who had trouble memorizing stuff. Some struggled with being efficient. We all have our weaknesses. But they all had motivation, and hard work always pays off. I knew that from experience. Even I struggled in my early days. I was always so obsessed with following the rules and couldn't think outside the box. My boss yelled at me many times for that. But I learned, you know, one thing at a time. But the problem with Ryuta was, he had no motivation. When I taught him something new, he forgot something else. He never took notes, he didn't even pick up the phone, and the second I looked away, he ran off to the smoking room. He was barely at his desk. You gotta finish this by today! Yeah, whatever. But then when I came back from a meeting, he was gone. Ryuta? Ryuta, where are you? Don't tell me you went home. I'm working! On what? I'm meeting people from the sales department. They asked me to join them. We're at a bar! That's not your job. Yeah, but it doesn't hurt to meet other people from the company. But what about your assignment? You have to finish that first. Chill out! Stop bossing me around, you nerd! And my uncle always told me it's not just about paperwork, it's about making connections. That's because he's in sales. You're not. Who's gonna finish your assignment? You handle it. What? You're my boss, right? You're responsible for cleaning up my mess. That's what bosses do, right? My uncle told me. And wait, why should I even listen to you? I'm just a better person than you. Just do it, man. Get off my back. You're right. It's my job to look out for my subordinates. But that's only if they're working hard. You haven't done anything. Come back now and finish it. But it's past six already. I thought that's when you're supposed to get off work. Rules are rules, right? What about deadlines, huh? We can't miss deadlines. This is our job. Oh, please stop, boss. You're harassing me. Our team leader won't even let new employees attend a welcome party? I'm gonna tell everyone here. I don't care. You gotta clean up your act. Hey man, as long as I get paid, I don't care. I'm gonna turn off my phone now. Wait! 
and he kept getting worse. When I gave him a big assignment, he gave up in the middle of it, and it took the rest of us three months to clean up his mess. Thanks to him, my workload doubled, and he didn't care one bit. He always went home when the bell rang, even though he knew I was staying late to fix his mistakes. And he wasn't shy about telling others that his uncle was the head of the sales department. Mr. Koneda was a pretty powerful figure. Soon, everyone was afraid to say anything to Ryuta. I was his boss, so I kept yelling at him, but he just didn't listen. Then it happened. Where are you? It's 9 a.m. Just woke up. I'm gonna take paid leave today. Stop kidding around. You only get paid leave after working here for six months. It was all in the guidebook. Oh, is that so? Oh, well, you're the boss. Figure it out. What can I do? Wow, you're so useless. Figure it out, man. Also, we got a complaint from Moni Roboco. That's your client, right? They said the documents haven't arrived. They asked for it a week ago. Ah, I remember. I think I forgot. Just handle it. You're my boss, right? That's not my job. Ah, uh, shut up already. Stop bossing me around, nerd. Remember who I am. I can talk to my uncle and make your life more difficult. Fine. You want to go there? All right, then. Try me. Oh, really? My uncle loves me. He always has my back. Say goodbye to your job. Don't come crying to me after. He called his uncle and told him that I was harassing him. He told him all kinds of things about me. He exaggerated a lot. Then Mr. Koneda came to see me at my desk. I thought my nephew was in good hands. What have you done? Is it true? You forced him to work even when he was sick? Mr. Koneda, please take a look at this. Training list? This is all the things he learned over the past three months. What? Make photocopies? Fill out the time card? That's it? As you know, I'm a pretty hardworking guy, so I did my best to teach him the ropes. But he just doesn't care. So what he said to me... He's got his side of the story, and I got mine. So you don't have to believe everything I say. But if you wish, you can ask everyone else. I think it'll help you get the big picture. I've heard enough. Sorry about all the trouble he caused. Then he went around asking about his nephew. And the colleagues started talking. It took him more than two hours to speak to everyone. He didn't even look angry anymore. He looked exhausted. Then, that evening... Yo, what did you tell him? He said he's done taking care of me. What the hell? Mr. Koneda came to see me. He wanted to know about you, so I told him. That's all I did. Oh, and he was talking to others, too. I guess he made his decision. Shut up, you nerd! You're causing me a headache! Look who's talking. Because of you, my workload has doubled. And have you seen your desk? It's a mess. You've only been here for three months. You went through my desk? What the hell? They told me to. I had to clean out your desk. There were some half-eaten snacks in there, too. Better finish it fast before it rots. Wait, what? Why are you cleaning out my desk? You're fired. That's why. Fired? The first six months is your trial period. The company can fire you during that period if they want. It was all in the guidebook. I guess you didn't read that, though. Anyways, it's over for you. No need to be polite to me anymore, though. You're not my colleague anymore. So... Wait, this is ridiculous! Ridiculous? You're the one who made this mess in the first place. And Mr. Koneda told me about your last company. You had an affair, right? And your wife left you? And now she's suing you for damages, right? And you're in debt from gambling, right? How much was it? Two million yen? Then you went crying to Mr. Koneda. You finally land a solid job, and this is how you repay him? Unbelievable. I thought he'd take care of everything. I need the money. If I get fired, I'm screwed. How am I supposed to get another job? You should have worked harder then. Too late for that now, though. I was willing to teach you, but you just didn't want to learn. Too late for regrets now. Oh, come on. We go way back. No, we don't. Please, I'll work hard. Please talk to someone. 
Sorry, but I don't trust you. One piece of advice, though. Learn to talk like an adult. We're not in high school anymore. Please don't leave me! Please! He called his uncle after that, but it was too late. He betrayed the one person who was willing to help him. And now he was screwed. He lost his job, so he got kicked out of the apartment. He didn't even have a home anymore. Plus, he was in debt to some dangerous people. I heard he works in construction or something. Who knows? I may be a nerd and a square, but I'm comfortable with that. This is who I am, so... I'm just gonna keep at it. My name is Sachi. I'm 18 years old, and I'm just an ordinary senior in high school. I have a twin sister named Yumi, but even though we're twins, she looks nothing like me. Yumi got all the good genes for looks. I mean, I'm not that ugly, but next to her, the difference was quite apparent. By the time we were in middle school, the difference was obvious, and Yumi started looking down on me around then. I'm so sorry. Looks like I got all the good genes. So instead, I studied hard and practiced hard for track and field and did well in both. But being a girl is difficult because I felt like I was still less than my sister because of her good looks. Yumi grew up to be so arrogant and started making ridiculous requests to me. Hey, I left my homework on your desk, so do that for me, okay? Again? Do it yourself for once. Shut up, just do it. The only thing you have going for you is your brain. Put that to some good use. No, I'm more athletic than you are also. As a matter of fact, besides your looks, I'm better than you at everything else. Yeah, yeah, whatever. But we're girls, right? Nothing is worth more to girls than good looks. I feel so bad for you. That's all you say. Shut up and do my homework, okay? Why do I have to do it? I'm busy. I have friends and a boyfriend, unlike you. I'm busy too, you know. Stop complaining or I'll tell mom. What, you're gonna tell her that I won't do your homework? Exactly. What the hell? How do I get in trouble for that? Shouldn't it be the other way around? You wanna put that to the test? Let's see who gets in trouble then. Fine, I'll do it. Just leave it there. Good. And if you're gonna do it anyways, stop trying to argue. Oh, one more thing. Your allowance, you keep it in your desk, right? Yeah, why? Wait, no! You better not steal it. I'm not stealing it, I'm just borrowing it. You've never paid me back. You don't have any use for it, right? Thanks, bye. As you can see, she's super selfish. And it's been like this for over five years already. And if my parents were somewhat normal, things wouldn't have gotten so out of hand. But my parents are nut jobs too. Both my parents loved my sister because she was so much cuter than me, and they made it pretty obvious. No matter what Yumi did, they would turn a blind eye, and if I ever made her angry, they would yell at me. Both Yumi and I were preparing for college entrance exams, but as expected, both my parents were uninterested in me. Mom, what's wrong? Huh? What do you mean? We have a meeting today with the career counselor. I told you days ago, didn't I? Did you? I totally forgot. Whatever, though. We don't need to speak, right? What do you mean? This is about my future. What were your plans after high school, by the way? Soke University. I told you that, too, many times before. Oh, that famous college. Are you smart enough to get in there? Yeah, my grades are good enough. My teacher is confident that I'll be accepted. Okay then, so there's nothing to talk about then. That's not the problem. But wait, isn't Soke University a private college? Yeah. No, 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 that's too expensive. We can't let you go there. Why not? Yumi's trying to go to private college too. That's exactly why. We'll be spending enough money on her. We won't have enough money left over for you. I see. So you're prioritizing Yumi again, as always? How expected of you. What are you trying to say? Forget it. Fine, I'll get a scholarship. Then there's no problem, right? A scholarship? Yeah, and I'll pay it back after I graduate. 
No problems, right? Uh, sure, whatever. But you better not come running to us for help if you can't make your payments. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I don't expect you to help me anyways. So I got a scholarship and got into college and applied for a room in their dorms. So I left the house as soon as I graduated high school. After that, I got a part-time job and spent all my time working and studying. I didn't visit home once, but my parents never even called to check up on me. My hard work paid off, and I graduated with flying colors. After graduating, I landed a solid job in an international firm. It was one of those companies that was based on merit, and I worked my ass off and got results there as well. A year later, I was making pretty good money for my age. And around then, Yumi texted me for the first time in a while. But... Hey, long time no see. How have you been? What do you want? Oh, that's cold. Aren't you happy to talk to me? Nope. Jeez, not only are you a failure, you're also a jerk. Are you done? Hold on, you haven't heard anything from mom? Nope, I haven't talked to her in ages. No wonder, you never even show your face at the house. I can't believe you guys are so out of touch. Well, I think the feeling's mutual. Just tell me what you want, I'm busy. I'm getting married! Cool, good for you. My fiance is a doctor and his dad owns a huge hospital. Didn't ask, but thanks for the info. Don't be jealous. It's true that you couldn't even dream of being with a guy like that, but still. Yeah, you're so amazing, sis. Is that all? And I'm having a wedding. Cool, have fun. I'm telling you that you're invited. Huh? Why? Why wouldn't you come? It's your sister's wedding for crying out loud. I'm sure no one cares to see me, right? Well, I already told my fiance that I have a sister. It would be weird if you weren't there at the wedding, right? Yeah, you're right. Okay, I'll be there. Good, I'll send you the invitation later. I received the invitation after that. But of course I didn't plan to go. I pretended to be ill and skipped out that day. Yumi and my parents called a million times, but I ignored it all. I had already pretty much cut ties with them in my mind, so I couldn't care less. They gave up trying to reach me to yell at me after a while, and peace returned back to my life. Work was going well, and my salary kept going up. I also found a boyfriend at the company. He was a very capable and loyal guy, and my life was better than ever. And just when things were looking good, Yumi always has to contact me and ruin it all. I brought you a great offer. You should thank me. Thanks. Bye. Hold on, I'm telling you. It's a great offer. What? Have you heard about mining for Bitcoin? Yeah, I've heard of it. I have this great investment opportunity related to that. All you have to do is invest $5,000, and in one year, it'll become $50,000. Where did you hear that? From a friend back in college. And there's an invitation bonus. That's why I'm telling you, too. Hey, I'm afraid to ask this, but have you already paid $5,000? Of course. You have to get in early on these kinds of things. Okay. Who else did you introduce, by the way? Dad and Mom. And did they pay too? Of course they did. They didn't have to think twice. I see. Well, just so you know, that's a scam. What? Yeah. It's a popular scam from back when crypto was becoming mainstream. I didn't know people still fell for that. No way. Stop lying. Hey, you know I work in finance right now, right? In other words, Investments is my profession. Trust me, just bail while you have the chance. Not that you'll ever see that $5,000 anymore, but still. You're pathetic, you know that? You've already lost to me in physical appearance, and now you're just feeling threatened that I'm going to beat you in income as well, right? Okay, how much money did you make then? Shut up, you just wait and see. You're going to regret this. Okay, good luck. Make sure you brag to me again. When your money increases tenfold, I'll apologize to you on my knees. I couldn't believe she was falling for such an obvious scam. Did her husband know about it too? 
I bet not. I knew for a fact that she was just going to lose that money. But oh well, $5,000 isn't much. She should just think of it as tuition for a valuable lesson about the real world. So after that text message, life went back to normal. And finally, it was my turn to get married. I didn't tell my sister or parents, but I'm sure they wouldn't mind. We held a small wedding and were living a happy life together. But once again, Yumi has to message me and ruin my peace. Hey, what's up? Just a question. Are you doing this on purpose? What do you mean? Forget it. What do you want now? I heard rumors. Are you married now? Yeah. Why didn't you invite me to your wedding? Don't be a stranger. Would you have come if I did invite you? Of course. You're my sister, Sachi. Hold on, you're creeping me out. What is it that you really want? Just tell me already. Okay, can you lend me some money? You're kidding, right? I'm serious, I'm like $100,000 in debt. What, why? Well, that crypto mining investment thing didn't work out. You mean you were scammed, right? Yeah, I tried to make up for the money I lost and I invested in all kinds of things after that. Are you serious? How typical. Nothing worked out, and I just have a bunch of debt left. Have your husband pay. His dad owns a hospital or something, right? We've been divorced for a while now. All right, what about dad and mom? I tried asking, but they don't have that kind of money. Please, help me. Sorry, Yumi. Unlike you, I'm not a screw-up, so I don't have that kind of money. Good luck. I heard that Yumi filed for bankruptcy after that and went back home penniless. She's a complete failure and is treated like a nuisance by my parents now. Yumi was spoiled ever since we were little kids and didn't have much real world experience before getting married. So she didn't have the tools or the mental strength to get back on her feet. The irony of life is that as a result of my harder upbringing, I currently lead a much better life. I guess I should be thankful to my parents and airhead sister. I'm Yuki. I'm in eighth grade. I live with my mom, but she doesn't like me very much. When she drinks, she always tells me she should have never had me and throws stuff at me. I always have to calm her down. She doesn't work. She's always gambling. I'm pretty sure that's why my dad left her. Whenever she wins money, she goes to this bar. She usually drinks too much and ends up having relations with random guys she met at the bar. And she usually gets with divorced guys with kids. I guess like minds attract. So every time she brings them home, I get new sisters and or brothers. When they're older than me, it's not that big of a problem. But when they're young, like under 10, it's pretty bad. Mom was addicted to gambling, so she didn't look after them. Most of the time, I ended up looking after them. And she doesn't even leave me any money. If I had money, at least I can cook for them. She uses all the money we get for gambling. I delivered newspapers to make a living. Then, six months later, she never stayed with the same guy for more than six months. So every few months, I had a new brother or a sister. I can't wait to get out of this house. Then it was summer. I was 14. That's when it happened. Uh, hey, you! What the? Uh, baby. What? Uh, uh, wow! It was a newborn baby! Look after it. Where did she come from? She's your sister. Have fun. Then she passed out. I found some paperwork in the stroller. Her name was Sakura Busujima. I thought she was just getting fat. I had no idea that mom was pregnant. What? I don't know how to take care of a baby. What do I do? Are you hungry? She needs to feed her. I guess not. I had this nice neighbor who also had a baby recently. I went over there and got some powdered milk. It must be tough for you. Yeah. If you need anything, just ask. Thank you. But I couldn't raise her on my own. I needed mom's help. I'll talk to her when she wakes up. But then, the next day she was gone. Take care of the baby. I won't be coming home. Mom! What the hell? What do you mean you're not coming back? What do you think it means? I'm not coming back. 
What do you mean? What about Sakura? Sakura? The baby you handed me yesterday! Oh, so that's her name. You raise her. I can't! I'm still in junior high! You'll be fine. How can you say that, Mom? Oh, come on. It's just a baby. Wait, is she yours? No. But you were getting pretty fat. I thought... What? Shut up! Someone paid me to take her. What? You can't just sell babies like that! That's illegal! Hey, I just got paid to take her off someone's hand. Think of it like recycling or something. How can you say that about a baby? What? Nobody wants her, so... Hey, I guess you guys have something in common. Mom, I know you never liked me, but how can you just hand me a baby like this? And you run off with the money? How can you do that to me? You talking back to me now? Huh? I'm the one who raised you. Just come home. I gotta go to school. Just put her in a foster home or something. I don't care. You're terrible. Whatever. I'm gonna live it up from now on. Stay out of my way. Mom? Seriously? Mom? Answer me! But she never did. She blocked me. I'm sorry, but I can't raise you myself. <laughs> but I realized that I was the only one that could save her. If I put her in some institution, I'm no better than mom. I decided to raise her myself. But I had school, so I couldn't do it alone. I asked my neighbors for help. I helped them around the house. And in return, I asked them to watch Sakura for me during the day. Some offered to call the city office for us. But that would put both of us in foster care, and I couldn't have that. After graduating junior high, I started working. My neighbors told me I could go to high school if I wanted to, but I didn't want to trouble them any longer. I put her in nursery school while I worked. I was still a teenager. It wasn't easy, but seeing her grow up was so rewarding. I told her that I wasn't her real father when she was in elementary school. I was really young, so she was going to find out sooner or later. I thought Sooner was better. I don't think she understood everything, but she got the idea. Fast forward a few years. Sakura was now in high school. Let's go out this weekend. This weekend? Yeah, I want to go see a movie. Sorry, but I got work. <sighs> Again? Sorry. You're working so hard. Yeah, but Daddy didn't even go to high school, so... I gotta put in the hours. Hey, what did we say about calling yourself daddy? Oh, sorry. You don't like that? No. Why not? I just don't. But you used to call me daddy all the time when you were little. That doesn't matter. Just stop pretending to be my dad. Sorry. Ugh, no, I didn't mean it like that. It's okay. You're a teenager. I get it. Plus, it's true. I'm not your dad. I mean, I'm 30 years old, so... That's not what I meant. You didn't even hear me out. Listen to me. Sorry. That's why you're single, you know? Sorry. So, um... Uh, you know... Huh? What? Ugh, I'm saying I'll be your wife. Huh? So... Is this some kind of prank? It's not a prank! Wait, my daughter is asking me to marry her? Stop calling me that! I'm not your daughter! I was so confused. My daughter was furious with me. Except, she wasn't my daughter. Sure, we're not related by blood, but to me, she was my daughter and... Hey, Sakura, listen, I'm flattered really. But I've been looking after you since you were a baby, and... So, you're saying no? No, that's not it at all, but... Fine, I get it. Sakura, please come home tonight, okay? No worries, I'll just pretend this never happened. And she did. She came home as if nothing happened. I was still shook, though. I gotta straighten up. Get it together. Then, I got an unexpected text the next day. Long time no see. Hello there. Nice to meet you. 
Mom? And who are you? It's the baby's dad. Sakura's dad? Thanks for taking care of her. What do you want? I want her back. What? She's my daughter. She's in high school now, right? Give her back to him. Are you kidding me? Seriously? You paid my mom to get her off your hands, and now you want her back? She's a human being! What's wrong with you? I paid your mom already. This isn't about money! Just settle down and hand her over, okay? No! This isn't your call. What did you say? She's my daughter. Legally speaking, I looked into you. You barely make enough money to support her. You didn't even go to high school. You sure you can provide for her? What? Let's let Sakura decide. But why now? Because I need her now. What? It's none of your business. Just ask her. Tell her she can have anything she wants if she comes back to me. Fine. Don't try anything funny. I already got the money. If this doesn't work, I gotta give him back the 5 million yen. And I already spent the money, so you have to pay him. I was so upset. Money, money, money. But he had a point. Can I really provide for her? If she says she wants to go to college, she would probably have to take out a student loan. But I had no choice. I called her up. I was hoping she'd say no to the offer, but... Okay. What? I'll go live with my real dad. Sakura! Thanks for everything. And it was over. Just like that. She left me. I cried all night long. My life felt empty. I lost all meaning in life. She was everything to me. And now she was gone! All I could do was drink myself to sleep every night. Then seven years went by. I was 37 now. I still had the same dead-end job. Then... Hello, I'm Sakura Busujima. Nice to meet you all. Sakura? It was her. She started working at the same place as me. I haven't talked to her in seven years. She was all grown up. She was really beautiful. But I didn't know what to say to her. It's probably better if I don't say anything. After work was over, I snuck out and tried to go home. But then... Hey! Huh? Why are you running from me? Well, um... You really think it's a coincidence that I'm here? It's not? You know how many companies there are in this country? But wait, why did you... I'm all grown up. I'm pretty, right? Yeah. I waited seven years. Huh? I don't look like a kid anymore, right? Huh? Wait. It felt like forever, but I did it. Seriously? You can't say no now. Oh. Wait, you're still gonna say no? Uh, well, um, actually... <laughs> I win! She thought I said no to her the first time because we were too close. That's why she decided to go live with her real dad for seven years. So I'd say yes. And it worked. Plus, she got some sweet revenge on her real dad and my mom. Turns out her real dad was an entrepreneur. And Sakura was one of his mistress's babies. At first, he needed to get rid of her. But after years of trying, he couldn't have kids with his real wife. So he decided to take Sakura back. He even got a TV station to do a whole special about the touching family reunion story. That's when she struck. At first, she went with the flow to gain his trust. But then when the time came, she told the world about the truth. He started panicking on live TV. It was hilarious. Then she went to the police and told them everything they did to us. They're in jail now. <laughs> Good job, Sakura. That's my daughter. Oh, wait. My wife. <laughs> Anyways, I'm happily married now. I'm much older than her, but she bosses me around all the time. But I don't care. I'm just glad I get to be with her again. And just the other day, we found out that she was pregnant. Can't wait to start a new family with her. Let us out!
out! I'm Akinori Nakaichi. I'm a 27-year-old office worker. It wasn't a big company, but business was good. And so was the pay. This is my boss, Atsugo Miyazaki. He was 40. Pretty young for a manager, but he was brilliant. He taught me everything from the start. And we were good friends outside of work, too. Recently, his wife left him. She was having an affair with someone and ran off. He was pretty upset, and I was worried. But a few months later, he found a nice woman. They got married after six months, and he was happily married again. It all happened pretty fast, but he seemed happy, so... Then, about six months after he got married, he sent me a text. Hey, you got a minute? Sure. Next weekend, I'm having a BBQ at my house. Wanna come? Of course! Sounds good. Thanks. Oh, and one more thing. Can I ask you a favor? Sure. I want to get something for my wife. Is it her birthday or something? No, no. You know she had her first child last month? Yeah, a boy, right? Yeah, he's adorable. I bet. So I wanted to get her something to thank her, you know? <laughs> I get it. So then, what do you want me to do? Well, I reserved this cheesecake. She said she wanted to try it, so... I need you to pick it up on the way to the party. Sure thing. Where's the store? It's on the first floor of that department store near the station. It should be around 30,000 yen. I'll pay you back at the party. 30,000 yen for a cake? It must be one hell of a cake. Yeah? Yeah! I guess you really love her. So on the day of the BBQ, I picked up the cake and headed over to his house. I was pretty excited to see his new wife, because it was my first time meeting her. This is my wife, Tamami. Nice to meet you. Frankly, she was pretty chubby. I wasn't expecting that, but it's none of my business. I said hello and went to talk to my other friends. The party was a lot of fun. I went inside the house to use the bathroom. I ran into a young girl in the house. I had no idea who she was. Hello. Hello. She was really skinny. After she saw me, she ran back into the house with an awkward look on her face. I'm not sure what it was, but something felt off about her. Then the party was over. When I got home, I sent my boss a text. Thank you for today. The food was delicious. Sure. Thanks for the cake. Looks like she really enjoyed it. Yeah. She basically ate it all by herself. I'm just glad that you're happy, boss. To be honest, I hated seeing you with your last wife. Yeah, that was rough. You helped me out a lot back then. Oh, all I did was drink with you and listen to you. I was pretty happy to get some free booze. Haha, <laughs> that won't be happening for a while. I'm a newlywed. I just want to get home as soon as possible, you know? Oh man, that must be nice. Having a family and all. Yeah, it's nice. By the way, I saw a girl in the house. Who is she? Oh, Kana. It's Tamami's daughter. My stepdaughter. I see. I didn't know. Ah, right. She never came out to the backyard on the day of the BBQ. Was she sick or something? No, she's just not social. She can't really talk to strangers. Oh. She said hello to me, though. Well, she can say hello, but... That's pretty much it. I see. Is she in third grade or something? Fifth. She's 11. Oh. She looked pretty small, so... I'm Kana. I'm 11 years old. I'm in fifth grade. I live with my mom, my stepdad, and my baby brother. I do everything around the house. It's been like this for a while now. And I look after my baby brother too now. Mom's usually not home during the day, so... I don't go to school very often. I'm just really busy with things around the house. Teacher sends me the homework, so I'm not behind on my studies. But I've never had a friend before. But I gotta focus on my work here at home. If I mess up, I'll get punished, so... For instance, just the other day... Kana, everything good? I just finished cleaning the house and doing the laundry. 
I also gave the baby some milk. Oh, okay. Is there anything you're not telling me? No. Liar. What? Stop lying. Dad told me. What did I tell you about barbecue? You told me to stay in my room until all the guests were gone. Right, but you left your room. No, I didn't. You lied again. It's true. One of his colleagues told us that he saw you in the house. I was just going to the bathroom. You still broke our promise. I told you to stay in your room. I never said you could go to the bathroom. I'm sorry. Too late for apologies now. You broke our promise, and then you lied about it. You will be punished for a week. Please forgive me. No, this is for your own good. Trust me. But a week? I can't. Just do it. Okay. And so, I was punished for a week. It was tough. I felt so dizzy. I still had to go to the grocery store, though. My arms felt numb. Kana! It was the guy from the barbecue party. My dad's colleague, if I remember correctly. He grabbed my bags for me. He was working, but he walked me home anyways. As I entered my house, he said to me, Hey, I want to ask you some things. Can you text me at this number? He gave me a piece of paper. He looked really worried for some reason. So when I got back to my room, I sent him a message. Hello, this is Kana. What did you want to ask me? Ah, uh, hey. Thanks for reaching out. Um, first off, don't you have school today? Yeah. So why were you out buying groceries? That's my job. I can't go to school when I got work to do. What about your mom? She's not home. She's gone most of the time. Not sure where she is. Wait, who cleans the house then? And your baby brother? I do all that too. I see. You looked kind of sick. You feeling okay? I'm being punished right now, so... I haven't been eating much, so... Punished? Yeah. Whenever I get in trouble, I get punished by mom. What does she make you do? During punishment, I can only eat a small rice ball and a glass of water each day. I can't shower, and I have to sleep in the storage. Seriously? Yeah, just like everyone else. You mean all your friends go through the same thing? Yes. In fact, Mom told me that some of them have it even worse. But they finish their homework on time, so they get to go to school. Mom tell you that too? Yes, I'm too slow at everything. That's why I gotta miss school and finish my homework. But they still take good care of me, and so grateful for them. I see. I ran into Kana in the city, so I said hi. Something seemed terribly wrong. So I gave her my number to ask her if she was okay. I was terrified to learn the truth. Her mother treated her like a slave. She was clearly brainwashed. I think this has been going on for a while now. I had no idea this kind of thing actually happened. I was kind of worried about Mr. Miyazaki. Did he know about this? He lived in the same house as them. There's no way he can't know. But I knew him well. There's no way he would let something like this go on. After much thought, I decided to ask him. Hey, got a minute? Sure, what's up? Well, I ran into Kana the other day during work, and... Oh, so? It was a weekday. She was out buying groceries. Yeah, she helps out around the house all the time. No, I mean... She should be in school, is what I'm saying. I guess, but it's what she wants, so... Really? She said she'd rather do housework than go to school? Yeah, what's the problem? She still studies from home. Uh, okay. Do you know about the punishment then? Yeah. You know what she does to her? Yeah, Tamami can be pretty strict. Hey, what is this about? Mr. Miyazaki, 
What's going on? What happened to you? Nothing. This is wrong. She's treating her like a slave. Hey, how we raise our daughter is none of your business. What? This isn't about that. This is obviously child abuse. Wake up! Please! Just stop it. I finally got a family. Don't take that away from me. You know this is wrong, don't you? Just leave me alone. Sorry, but I can't do that. I called child services right away. I showed them all my messages. They also got testimonies from teachers at school. It didn't take long for them to get her mother. Mr. Miyazaki got taken downtown as well for letting this go on in his house. Needless to say, he got fired. I don't regret what I did, but it still felt bad losing someone close to me like that. Like the famous saying goes, love is blinding. Then a few months later, I got a letter from Kana who is in a foster home now. She said things have gotten much better for her, and that she couldn't thank me enough for what I did. I was really glad to hear that. Thank you.